NFTs have fallen off a cliff. During the first couple months of 2022, the NFT market continued to grow, even while the crypto market declined, then crashed then crashed again. Now the NFT market has also fallen. So how bad is it? OpenSea, the world's largest NFT marketplace, reported a 75% drop in sales volume. The average sales price for a bored ape dropped by more than half. The average cost to buy an NFT was nearly $1,800. Now barely over $400. Oh, and you can't forget about the poor fella who bought Jack Dorsey's first tweet for $2.9 million and then tried to resell it a year later. And the highest bid was $10K. So does this mean NFTs are dead? That's what we're going to uncover. And in doing this research, I realized I have quite the controversial opinion on the future. But before we get into the future of NFTs, we need to understand the value that they offer right now. Everyone's favorite use case, or maybe the most hated, depending on who you ask, is as collectibles. This is the most simple use case as well. You know, the one where people buy expensive JPEGs and then use them as their profile pictures on Twitter. The utility for a collectible is just that, a collectible. Something you think is cool, maybe you have an emotional connection to it. You could try to sell it for more money down the line, but there's no guarantee of a positive ROI. Return on images. That's the best I could come up with. <laughs> Nevertheless, this by far is where most money is going within the NFT market. In hindsight, it's easy to see the collectible side of things was getting a little bit oversaturated. I mean, Coca-Cola and Campbell's Soup made NFTs last year. Charmin made them too. You know, NFTPs. I'm... Um, I'm doing poorly today. When, when soup and TP brands are doing a thing that's supposed to be cool, it's a not a great sign. But now let's look at another kind of NFT, art. And you might be asking yourself, isn't art collectible? Yes. The distinction here is that collectibles in the NFT community are usually created by some kind of AI and are always part of some limited edition collection. Think bored apes or crypto punks. Art, on the other hand, is created by a human artist. That could mean some sort of painting or photo, music, animation, or even film in the form of an NFT. And there's some pretty cool stuff happening here. There's so much more going on in the NFT art world than just your childhood memories turned into nightmares. And one is a project that I've been tracking for the past few months. The first movie to be released and funded by the sale of NFTs. Kevin Smith, aka Silent Bob, will be releasing his next film called Kilroy Was Here as an NFT, and it seems to be going pretty well. Musicians are getting in on the action as well. Because sooner or later, the label's gonna have to come on in, and they're gonna have to come on home, and they're gonna have to sit at the table and understand that, you know, their catalogs and things that they hold on to are better served on the blockchain than sitting in the catalog collecting cobwebs. Snoop's point here is that NFTs offer musicians a way around the corporate music industry, one that's famous for exploiting artists. I mean, remember how Prince literally changed his name to a symbol in attempt to get out of a contract with his record label? And to further this point, the top 10 NFT sales in music last month were all released and sold without the involvement of a major record label. Now that is utility. Now gaming is the third sector of NFTs. Over the last year or so, the sector has had the highest number of active wallets and sales and continues to do so even in this bear market. But the highest number of sales does not mean the most money. Collectible sales net 10 times more than gaming. Axie Infinity is the most popular game using NFTs. The characters, or axes as they call them, are NFTs that the player must buy or rent in order to actually play the game. And there are plenty of other NFT games, but the overall consensus seems to be that blockchain games need to just get better in order to compete with the existing gaming world. However, the future utility of NFT gaming has got to be one of the most exciting. Just think about how much time, effort, and sometimes money you put into getting that upgrade in a game. It's huge. But after you're done playing, all those hard-earned assets are just stuck there in that single game. Think about how cool it would be to be able to use those assets within other games, or maybe rent, or sell, or trade them to another player. There's so much potential upside for gaming NFTs, but the challenge here is to keep these things games. We don't want every game to turn into a job, and I think that's what they kind of are right now. Now, metaverse NFTs are the fourth sector of NFTs, and much like gaming, the sector still has a really long way to go before we see its true potential, like a long, long way. But wait, you say to yourself while watching this video in your left hand and your name also happens to be Matt, There'd be any mats out there who are doing that are freaked out right now. But you might be saying, we already talked about gaming. Isn't metaverse and gaming NFTs the exact same thing? Well, 
not exactly, no. Think of it like this. A metaverse NFT is like the deed to land. Then let's say an office space is built on top of that land. This space is home to a thriving business. The office space itself is more like a gaming NFT, an NFT built on NFT land. I know it gets dorky really quickly. It's like dork built on kind of more dork. But much like the real world, land in the metaverse is not cheap. The average cost of a sandbox land piece is $2,300. And they've been purchased for far more, as much as half a million dollars depending on location. But despite all the talk about the metaverse recently, the sector is actually still quite small. In fact, metaverse NFTs only make up about 1% of all sales by number of transactions. So even though there's massive hype, this sector, at least in terms of NFTs, has stagnated, at least for now. Now let's take a look at utility NFTs. These NFTs offer the holder some sort of utility. Think, does this NFT solve a real problem? Does it have a defined function? If so, then you probably have a utility NFT. Probably the most well-known of this type is the Ethereum name service, or ENS. ENS provides holders a readable name for their Ethereum wallet address. Instead of something like this, you get something like this. ENS addresses are still quite popular, especially after the domain name 000.eth recently sold for 300 ETH. But there's more to utility NFTs. A company called StockX that sells rare sneakers, collectibles, and electronics use these artistic NFTs as a kind of voucher for the real item within their warehouse. So you can buy the NFT and then trade it or sell it on their marketplace or redeem it at any time for the real item. There's also promising uses for the medical field. Right now, there's a company called I Medis, who's trying to move patients' medical records onto the blockchain. This will make them accessible to any healthcare provider, no matter where the patient is or which doctor they see. They also plan to make patients' medical data anonymous, meaning they would allow patients to sell their anonymous data for research purposes and actually make some money doing it. So maybe, maybe you have an especially small body part, like a medical anomaly. You might be able to profit off of that information passive income. In the first half of 2022, utility NFTs have lagged far behind collectibles and gaming in nearly all metrics. But I think that this will likely be the highest value area 10 years from now and 20 years from now. There have been plenty of people who see the recent dip in NFT sales as proof that the bubble has officially popped. They'll now just fade out in the horizon like Beanie Babies or the Tide Pod Challenge. But I don't think that's going to happen. NFTs remind me a lot of VR headsets. You put one on and you're like, wow, this is going to be the future, but it's not there quite yet. There's so many awesome potential use cases for NFTs that are just now being explored. It's like the tip of the spear right now. If NFTs and blockchain technology became widely used, we would see driver's licenses, medical records, passports, certifications, diplomas, all easily accessible with just a cell phone. Is that gonna happen overnight? Obviously not, and it probably won't even happen in the next couple years, but this is exactly what NFTs are perfect for, verifiable digital ownership. So breaking down NFTs into different sectors is a useful way to see how the space is developing, where the money's going, but these sectors often intersect one another, and they certainly aren't set in stone. And with that in mind, I believe there'll eventually be a flippening of NFTs. This is my controversial opinion. Collectibles will continue to exist, but they'll no longer be what everyone thinks when you say NFT. Likewise, art as NFTs will just solidify as a new medium for digital art. It makes sense. Music NFTs make a lot of sense as well in a time where most artists get popular on social media anyways. Then blockchain games and the metaverse. Those will hang around but need a whole lot more work before people actually want to use them on a daily basis. It's the utility NFTs where I believe the large scale adoption of this technology begins and stays. And don't get me wrong, JPEGs are kind of cool, but the idea of not having a paper social security card or having verifiable labels to help combat counterfeit goods or having a truly tamper-proof shipping label, that seems like the real future to me. Products and services that solve real-world problems.